My name is Alexander Locke and I'm Curator of Modern Archives and Manuscripts at the British Library. I'm Kate Dossett, Professor of American History at the University of Leeds. And today we're looking at some manuscripts that are held in the Lord Chamberlain's Play Collection. Between 1737 and 1968, all plays destined for the English stage had to be sent to the Lord Chamberlain's office for censorship. This involved examiners of the plays marking the play script up in blue pencil, outlining sentences or ideas that couldn't be shared with the public, writing back recommendations to the, to the authors of the plays about this, and recommending to the Lord Chamberlain whether the play should be allowed on the stage or totally banned. Here we're looking at a play called At What a Price by Una Marzen. Kate, why At What a Price and who was Una Marzen? At What a Price is a really interesting play by the poet, activist, uh, anti-racist um, campaigner Una Marzen. She was a Jamaican woman who came to London in the early 1930s. At What a Price is a really interesting play. It explores uh, the life of the heroine Ruth Maitland. Ruth is a young, educated black woman who moves from uh, the rural area outside Kingston to the city to take up a job, a secretarial post. And we know that she's educated and we know that she's black. And this is really important because the people who come to read this play in the Lord Chamberlain's office don't seem to recognise either of these facts. So it's a play that seems old fashioned in very many ways, certainly the readers thought so, but it's actually a play that really speaks to many contemporary issues around how young women navigate male dominated workspaces and of course uh, interracial relationships too. So I'm quite struck by the idea that sort of the Lord Chamberlain's play unwittingly sort of preserves all this material, preserves all these plays, preserves all their, their ideas about them. So in, in one way they're sent in as, a, as an exercise in censorship, but actually preserved and gave these plays longevity long, long after the Lord Chamberlain's office was abolished. Yeah, and that's a really interesting point, because when we look at archives and records of black creatives, intellectuals and activists from the first half of the 20th century, it is often hard to find that material. And your choice of the term unwitting, I think, is really interesting, because if we read the reader's reports, we have one here, um, the examiner of plays says, well, we understand that this was produced by the League of Coloured Peoples, but he says, it seems to have no particular relation to the objects of that institution, except that the scene is in Jamaica and some of the minor characters are of colour and speak, quote, a more or less diverting dialect. So what we see here then is that the reader of this play doesn't understand that this is about an interracial relationship. He assumes that Ruth, the heroine, is white, um, isn't very concerned at the sexual politics of the office, but certainly doesn't understand that she's a black, educated J Jamaican. So unwitting is absolutely there in this report, unwitting in the sense that no understanding that an educated young woman uh, could be black assumes that she's white, but also only understands characters to be black if they speak in what a white person imagines to be a black Jamaican dialect. There sounds like there's a lot in there that could be censored and crossed out in the Lord Chamberlain's famous blue pencil. What sort of things was he crossing out and in the manuscript, if any? Did he know who Una Marzen was? I suspect they didn't know who Una Marzen was and certainly didn't make any inquiry as to her racial identity, though of course they note that she is associated with the League of Coloured People, so they might have speculated as to that. The reader's report we have here says nothing to censor. It describes it as an artless, old-fashioned kind of affair. We might speculate that had they had a better grasp of what this play was about, they might have censored some of the, some of the scenes around the interracial relationship, because it's not a good look, you know, what senior white man harasses young black woman in the workplace. It's incredible that what began as sort of a private, hidden censorship archive 
has eventually come to a public institution is publicly accessible and now as with the case with At What A Price, digitised and soon to be made available online for readers to see around the world. And reading these archives and these censorship reports allows us to talk back and to talk back to these archives and to reanimate them and, and to change their meaning because those censorship reports, but the plays themselves, have new meanings which we give to them when we read, use and even stage them today. Mm -hmm.